the stage without his fans yelling for more. 1962 marked a special year for Mr. Goulet. Just 10 years after his debut, he received a Grammy Award for Best New Artist. Robert's family was particularly pleased, and congratulatory telegrams came from all over the country. Of course, his heart was really set on Broadway, where he was an overnight sensation. Playing to packed audiences, he sang the stirring showstopper, If Ever I Would Leave You, in Camelot. The ballad became a theme song of sorts, and Robert Goulet was here to stay. 1968 was a monumental year in theater, because that was the year that Mr. Goulet was awarded a Tony for his work in The Happy Time. But let's not forget the importance of Robert Goulet in the movies. He has appeared in over a half dozen movies, including such great films as Honeymoon Hotel, Ideal in Danger, and I'd Rather Be Right. On television, he was one of the guests on Bob Hope's special entitled All Hands on Deck for Bob Hope's All-Star Birthday Party at Annapolis. In recent years, Mr. Goulet has devoted much of his time to worthy causes. He is a timeless, generous performer who is always there to lend a hand when help is needed. Anyone who has seen his work on telethons will know that he is a man of great courage, warmth, and compassion. And let's not forget his intelligence and wit. His clever quips have made him a hit at many a Hollywood party. One movie star remarked his wit is, quote, as sharp as a stick. We hope we can honor this man in the short time that we're allowed. So let's get started right away with one of his biggest fans, Miss Jeannie Gold. Miss Gold is president of the Long Island Robert Goulet Fan Club and has been a fan for several years. It's nice to have you with us, Miss Gold. It's great to be here, too. Uh, now, when I came to your office, I noticed that you had um, hundreds of photographs all over the wall, and several of them seemed like they were autographed. That's correct, Mr. Kaufman. I've been following Mr. Goulet's career for several years now, and uh, those autographs that you saw are real. So you actually met him? Oh, no. You see, in order to get the picture, uh, an autograph of a famous person, all you need to do is send a letter to his agent. I've, I've tried for several years, actually, to meet him, but it's very difficult. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, um, as I said before, I've always admired Mr. Goulet, both as an entertainer and as a person. Um, what is it about him that attracts you? Everything. His eyes, his smile, his mustache. That guy is a hunk and a half. Right. Um, now, you, you also wrote a poem about all the things you like about him, which you uh, told me before has been published? Yes, it's called An Ode to Bob, and it's going to be published in the next issue of Movie Screen Magazine. Well, that's great. Uh, would you mind sharing it with us before it appears in print? Well, well, I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, would it be okay if I could stand to read this? Um, yes. Yeah. Who was that man in Camelot who stole my heart and smiled a lot? Who was that man who taught me love, who gave me faith in God above? Who was that man, I ask you now? Who was that man who taught me how? Who was that man who won me over and showed me what is meant by lover? I ask you now, who is that man? I ask you now, what is his plan? Where does he get that special power to turn each weed into a flower and sing each song with so much love, with a voice that sails on wings of a dove? I'll tell you now, if you don't yet know, who is that man that I love so? His name, of course, is Bob Goulet, and someday I'll cook him a souffle. Well, that was really something. Uh, I just didn't understand. Um, if you don't mind me asking, the last line? Oh, you mean the part about the souffle? Yeah, well, people have told me about that part, but I think it works because it rhymes. 
Oh, come on, Miss Gold, I mean, no disrespect meant, but there is more to poetry than just rhyming. I mean, come on, you can go, you know, Joe Schmo, or come on, I mean, like, it, Soule, Souffle. It's good. It rhymes. Well, actually, maybe it is okay, because you do get across the idea that you want him to come to your house. Exactly. Do you hear that, Robert? Now, we also, uh, you brought a painting that... Uh, uh, oh, uh, oh, oh no, no, yes, uh, that's going to be unveiled later in the show by the artist. Okay, I see. Okay, so I guess then um, we'll just uh, go to the, uh, our, well, our next, perf we'll introduce our next guest now. Uh, his Long Island, he, his original song, Long Island is Everything, was featured on Channel 7 Eyewitness News. This, uh, this special songwriter has also written other songs that have been featured on radio, TV, as well as many Long Island and Manhattan clubs. We wanted to get one of Robert Goulet's songwriters, but none of them were available at the time. But we do hope that perhaps Mr. Goulet would consider recording one of the original songs of our next songwriter. And here he is to sing one of his original songs. Please welcome Stryker. next to me. Thank you. That's your honor to, oh. after that, such a great song. Thank you very much. And why don't you put this on so everyone can hear you. That was really something. What a nice song. Yes, I got the inspiration to write that song when I was in Florida with uh, Mr. Stryker and our 21-year-old daughter. Uh, that was uh, back late in 84, and uh, we went shopping for souvenirs, and there was a plaque that we picked up at the time, to be happy is now. And uh, that's where I got the inspiration to write the song, the little girl happily did play, with the, uh, which says the time to be happy is now. Um, how long have you been writing songs uh, originally? Well, I first like started writing <laughs> original songs. You having a little trouble with the mic? Yeah, I'm having a little trouble clipping this on. Okay. Uh, I first started writing original songs in 1949. Uh, that first song was Don't Cry, Crunchy Wunchy. Well. And I got the inspiration to write that song uh, when I was s dream sleeping. I had a dream in Technicolor. 
and there was a dwarf running around in my sleep saying, crunchy, wunchy, crunchy, wunchy. And I w when I woke up, uh, I wrote the song, Don't Cry, Crunchy, Wunchy. Well, that's great. That's great. Um, obviously, we're devoting this show to Mr. Robert Goulet. Has he influenced your career in any way? Well, I saw him at Westbury Music Fair, and he was really great, very versatile. And uh, I would love him to sing one of my songs. And I have a song I think would be particularly good for him, Always Be Lovers. Great. And I was inspired to write this song uh, when I read in a uh, column that actress Joan Blondell uh, sent two glasses of champagne over to a nearby couple with a note from her, Always Be Lovers. All the profits of this song will be contributed to create more lasting and loving family relationships. A few lines. Uh, that tell you all about, and remember, mates, it takes two of you to make them work. Always find time for romance, and to say I love you. Don't deny each other the love that's due every man and a wife. Then you'll always be lovers, you'll always be lovers, and you'll have a beautiful life. You know, Mr. Goulet is such a friendly man. I think that since your work is so good, you ought to send him a tape of your work. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I mean, actually, for everybody out there in TV land, if you have anything that you think is good, that you have a talent for writing songs, why don't you send it to Mr. Goulet? Um, who knows what might happen? He might record it and give you credit for it, and you might get famous from it. So please, try sending it in. Have you ever sent any music to anybody famous? Oh, yes. I, uh, well, I got to sing my Long Island song on TV. I called up the uh, station, TV station, and I sung the song to him. And he said, we're going to come down to your office and uh, do a taping of it, a TV taping. And uh, Vince LaPari came down. And he sung, discussed the song with me. Also, I sent a song to uh, Rich Brown of NYU, and uh, 1,500 records were made and uh, distributed to the students at NYU University. And Liza Minnelli is great about answering letters. I sent her uh, some of my songs, and this is a reply that she uh, gave back, sent back to me. So you sent a song to Liza Minnelli? Yes, yeah, she, she is responded. very, very good in responding to these songs. Did she, did this she is re another reply that she sent, uh, returned. You can see the nice uh, That's great. Liza on there. You guys are all pen pals at this point. Well, we, yes, quite a few letters back and forth. Did she record any of your songs? Not yet, but oh, I boy. think the time to be happy now would be a great song for Liza. Okay. You listening to that, Liza? Um, well, we're going to move on with our, with our special tribute to Robert Goulet, but be sure to stay tuned because um, we're going to have a special portrait that you heard about earlier unveiled a little later. But right now, it's... Um, my special privilege, and we're fortunate enough to have two more songwriters at the team, and they sing. Um, please welcome Rob and Tom. i 
Robert Caffiello. Yes, Tom wrote it. That's great. Welcome. Sorry, sorry to be late. It's okay. You guys must be excited. I mean, here you are. Very excited. Oh, yeah. Here yeah. you are, just starting out in show business, your first time on television, and already you have the opportunity to express your admiration for Mr. Goulet. What did Mr. Goulet mean to you growing up? I mean, did you perhaps enter the business because of him? Uh, well, well, not not really. Uh, not precisely you know, because of him. Exactly, not um, really that. But, uh, but oh, oh my gosh, my children were listening to "If Ever I Would Leave You" as soon as they were old enough to understand, and now they cry whenever they hear that song oh, played. Oh, really? <laughs> no, uh, certainly. Uh, you had not really listened to him growing up. Not predominantly. No. Striker, you have children. When they were growing up, did they listen to Robert Goulet, or were they more attracted to uh, rock and roll the kids like today? Yeah, I would say more rock and roll. And uh, Mrs. Striker, my children, they think uh, I'm the biggest ham. But when I, my song Long Island is everything made eyewitness to is they were all glued to the television set. Long Island has everything in the summer, the winter, the autumn or spring. And sometimes you learn from rejection because I got a great song from being on talent shows where I was first prize, second prize, third prize, and I've been gonged, gonged. Uh, and I wrote, there's going to be no gongs tonight because Stryker's going to sing it up right. He's going to win the local talent show. No gongs tonight. Gong. <laughs> you, know, you know, you remind me of... Um, the old musicals they had in movies from you know 20 years ago, like Oklahoma, somebody would be talking, and then all of a sudden they'd break out into song. It's like <laughs> talking to you. It's like you always end up in a song. Um, but anyway, I have more questions for you guys. Um, Great. Now you're older. You've grown mm -hmm. up, so you must have. You must now appreciate the contributions Mr. Goulet has made. Um, as aspiring singers, what do you admire most about him? Um, well, that. Uh, that's a hard question, yeah. really. Um, uh, he's he's been around a long time. Yeah, he's been around a long time for many many years, and and he's certainly made many albums uh, and um, a, a wide variety of music. I uh, I think he's covered terrifically yeah. unique styling. Yes. H have you ever written a song for Mr. Goulet? Because if if he sang it, it would be a hit. Uh, you don't write disgusting lyrics, do you? <laughs> Um, no, no. Uh, we we try to avoid that really. Yeah. Um, actually, we're we perform. we generally write for ourselves. Yeah. Oh, you should try to get Mr. Goulet to record one for you because uh, 
he's a very generous man, and, and he, would, he would give you credit. He'd say that you would wrote it? the song and that he thanks you for it. I'd yeah. die if he said that to me. <laughs> well, don't do that. But, you know. um, Stryker, how about you? Maybe you can help these youngsters out. Do you prefer to sing your own songs or to have someone else sing the songs you write? Well, I love singing my songs, but recently I had a great artist, uh, Sal Renown, record on Joe Franklin's Memory Lane, and I was very pleased. Joe spins them, he plays them from midnight till 5 a.m. He's the king of nostalgia with his sentimentalgia. You'll forget your heartache and pain on Joe Franklin's memory <coughs> lane. There he goes again. Great. Um, very, very nice. Well, you guys must be looking for advice at this stage of your careers. Um, Stryker's been in the business for years. Why don't you ask him a few questions? Uh, go well, ahead. Uh, when, when um, how do you, when I'm writing a song, sometimes I, I keep writing it. Uh, I don't know when to stop. When is a song finished? Is there a way of knowing? Many times I've, you know, many times I thought a song was finished, but I tried it out at different talent shows, which is a great place to try the songs out. Mm -hmm. And audience reaction said sometimes it's too long, the word had to be changed. Oh. So I've revised many songs after I thought it was completely finished. Mm -hmm. how, how did you enter? show business. I mean, uh, how do you go about getting discovered or, yeah, you know? Well, I'm still being discovered. <laughs> <laughs> I hope uh, you just get, get as much exposure. And I said on talent shows are really great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that's where I, I was seen on talent show. That's why I'm here. Mm. That's why I was down at NYU mm. performing. Oh. Mm. And had 1,500 records made. Mm -hmm. And it gives you confidence. Yeah. Nothing like experience before the audience. Mm. So man who's been in the business for years. Yeah. I hope him. it wasn't that obvious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a question for all of you, actually. Um, do you ever wake up in the morning and say to yourself, gee, Mr. Goulet makes it look so easy. I'm not good enough to hold his golf clubs. Why do I bother? Well, I don't feel that way. I feel he has a great voice to sing my song, and I've got a great song for him to sing. Well, that's nice. Hmm. Nice marriage. How about you? Uh, I, thoughts never really um, occurred to me. Not in so many words. Not per se that exactly. Not the, yeah, phrasing. not that question. No, precisely. Okay. Um, at this time, you know, it seems like we don't want to hide anything, um, and there have been things said about Robert Goulet that are less than complimentary, and I'd like to just throw them out in the open um, and see if we can dispel them or at least just address them, maybe resolve them. Uh, one of them is that um, he uh, supposedly has a, a drinking problem. Well, Johnny Carson does also. Oh, so um, I, I guess then it's okay. After all. <laughs> okay. Um, it's also been said that Elvis Presley was once um, watching television when Robert Goulet was on, and he shot the television set. Well, didn't well. he shoot Frank at Frank Sinatra too? I think. The um. I believe the king had a temper. Uh, sure. It might have just been a bad day. Bad, he was under a lot of pressure. Mood. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess then it's okay. But he can't get that problem. Yeah. Um, well, Miss Gold, you were telling me earlier that you have a funny story that Robert Goulet tells about Wayne Newton. Yes. He says that when Wayne Newton was younger, he sounded like a girl. And now that he works out and grew a mustache, he sounds like a woman. Well, in any case, we are running out of time. So if you could quickly bring yes, on yes, that Yes, I would artist. like to introduce the artist who did a wonderful portrait of Robert Goulet, Frank Hope. Would you, and it's going to be unveiled for the very first time on this show. Frank? That's great. Um, we thank you. That's very good, Mr. Hope. Um, we thank you for joining us tonight in our special tribute to Robert Goulet. And we wish him a few more successful years in show business. And we hope that he would never leave us any time of year. Robert Goulet, a man among men. <laughs>